Hey guys, Adam with uh, Tech Secrets Revealed, and today we're going to show you how to replace a keyboard on your laptop. Uh, there's more than one reason why you'd want to do this today. The reason I'm doing this is because I'm spoiled and want a backlit keyboard, and this did not come with one. It's completely unnecessary, but you know what? So are 50,000 pairs of shoes for women, so it is what it is. Um, a lot of times, especially nowadays, these keyboards for laptops are so skinny and fragile that they die all the time for literally no reason. You no longer have to throw it across the room and damage it for it to die. You can turn it on one day and all of a sudden the backspace key is dead. Um, the one thing I do want to point out and I'll show you in the video where I open it up. Um, before you go and get a backlit keyboard for a laptop that currently doesn't have one, make sure that it does support a backlit keyboard. I've run into a problem where usually the backlit keyboards will have two ribbon cables coming off them. There will be one fat one and one really skinny one. The fat one is the same one for the non-backlit, that's just, you know, the keys, everything else. And then there's one little skinny ribbon cable that's responsible for the illumination. Um, if you do not have two ports for a ribbon cable, for a fat one and a skinny one obviously, your motherboard does not support a backlit keyboard. Um, I know there are a few exceptions, but that's 98% of laptops work that way. Um, I can show you right now, actually. The one that I'll be installing came in the mail today. It's an exact um, replacement for the one here, except it is backlit. Now, if you look on the back, this ribbon cable is your standard. You know, I'm glad they put up in giant letters in case I didn't know which way it was up and down in which case I shouldn't be touching computers. Um, this is for typing, you know, the keys, everything else. This little skinny thing down here, all this is is for the illumination. This is for the lights. That's it. If it does not have this and only has this, and you ordered a backlit keyboard, get in touch with the seller because you got lied to. So having said that, let's get to the fun part. Okay, so I've now shut down the computer. I'm hoping that I don't have to tell anybody that you have to shut down the computer before you take it apart and if I have to then <laughs> honestly go uh, find a channel like about Lucky Charms or something. Um, just like every other time, first thing we're going to do is take out the battery. Second thing we're going to do, even though I won't be able to uh, hear any responses, I'm going to leave this up to you guys. We do what? Hold down the power button for 20 seconds. Um, for anybody that hasn't watched any other videos, the reason that we do this is because even though you've removed the AC adapter and the battery, the motherboard can still hold a residual charge. And even though there's no quote unquote power actually going to this right now, you still can short something out. It takes nothing to turn this into a dead laptop and turn you into a uh, pile of rage for the rest of the day. Okay, now before we do anything else, some laptops will have a screw somewhere in like this general region, somewhere in the middle-ish kind of, and it'll usually have a little logo, as I covered in the other video for the Wi-Fi adapter, here's a little radio antenna, here's a little microchip, RAM, Wi-Fi. It will more than likely be just some random screw in the middle of nowhere, and it'll actually have a picture for a keyboard. Um, if it doesn't, the keyboard screw, if it does have a screw in the middle of nowhere, but it doesn't have a picture for a keyboard, chances are that probably is the one that holds in the keyboard. What I'm working on right now is a Dell XPS L502X, and this one does not have a uh, keyboard screw, so I don't have to worry about that with this one. So, moving on. <laughs> um, whether or not it has a keyboard screw doesn't really matter, because there are these tiny little clips... Let me see if I can show you. Probably not because this key, this uh, camera is a joke. But they'll be right there along the top lip of the keyboard. They're tiny little clips and they hold the whole thing to the rest of the computer. Um, on that topic, don't waste your time buying these these kits you see on Amazon with uh, these spudgers and these you know case separation tools and everything. If any of you are musicians, which I'm sure most of you are because for some reason um, 
you know, electronics repair and technology and stuff like that and music tend to go hand in hand. This right here is your best friend. It's a standard guitar pick. I tend to play um, medium width. This goes right between panels, gets clips out, everything. Oh, let me cover the House of Blues logo. I don't have $50 million to pay them. Um, but this works just as well as a kit that you'd buy off of Amazon. There's no reason to buy anything else. So, these clips back here, trust me, do not use a metal tool because you will regret it. You're just going to want to kind of wedge it in there and kind of play with it. You can see that, you know, the keyboard already started coming up. You'll hear like a little snap. You didn't break anything, or hopefully you didn't. Here's another one. Just kind of jiggle it just a little bit. <laughs> and then you get the one over here. And if you have to use something metal, which on this one decides to be stubborn, of course, just for, you know, the sake of the video. Use a little flathead screwdriver, but be extremely careful with it. If it, it shouldn't fight you very much. If it's fighting and it refuses to come up, one of two things happens. Either you're not hitting the clip the right way, or there is a keyboard screw that's still connected that you haven't found yet. And if that's the case, you're going to want to find it. So, we're going to go up here. Be very careful. And we got half of it up. Go over here. Be very careful. And pick it up. Well, pick it up with the tool and pick it up with your hands. And don't be afraid. We're going to pull this way from the top up toward you. Just give it a little tug. It'll pop up. Now, do not just pull on it because the ribbon cables underneath are still connected. Now, under here, this is the main ribbon cable. Again, with that giant up sticker like I'm an imbecile. So, what you're going to do. Just get your fingernail. Let me see if I can zoom in with this at all. There we go. That little black thing right there. You know what? Let me get a flashlight because I'm sure you guys can't see this. If I can't, then you can't. Okay, is that better? That little connector, that black line that's running across, you can flip that up just with your fingernail. Now, as I had mentioned before, if it doesn't have two ports, it most likely it does not support backlit keyboards. This one, if you look, it has that fat one, and there's their connector for the little skinny one. It just doesn't have it because I guess they saved a couple of bucks. So what we're going to do, see how good I am with my hands here, we're going to pull this up very gently, and it's up, and this comes right out now. There. Now. This is the part that might make you tear your hair out. I don't have hair, so luckily I don't have that problem. Um, on any of these parts that have a ribbon cable, if you look, you see that white line right there. That line is supposed to be lined up right at the bottom of the connector. Like Basically, that's as far as you put it in. If you put it in and you don't see that white line anymore, or at least some part of it, then you have it wedged in too far. Uh, again, this is another one of those things that you shouldn't need to fight or force anything. It should go in nice and easy. And those tabs on the side, if you look carefully, I can't really show you on the camera, but if you look carefully on the side of the ribbon cable connectors, there are little cutouts where those little notches fit in perfectly, which basically guide you as to exactly how far to put it in. So, let's go. So if you want my opinion, I would put in the fat one first. I'm going to put it in there nice and easy. And I don't know if you guys can even... Let me switch hands here. I don't know if you guys can even see this, but we'll do it this way. This is like impossible to do. Okay. I'm going to stick it in nice and easy and hold it down with one finger. And we're going to push that little black thing that you just flipped up, push it back down gently until it kind of snaps down. Same thing with this ribbon cable that my hand is in the way of. Here, let me move this a little bit. Maybe I'll give you a better angle. There we go. That ribbon cable is going to go right down there. Again, same concept. Stick it in there. 
And this is why we did the fat one first, because the little one is a pain in the ass usually. And for those of you that are offended that I said ass, go watch uh, Care Bear cartoons if that's the problem. You're on the wrong channel on YouTube. I'm going to push it in, flip that down. Okay, now I don't know if you can see it, but it's all connected to the laptop right now. So what we're going to do is, here I'll show you on the old one. It's got these little notch things. So what you're going to do is whatever side those are on, usually they're on the bottom. Shove that part in first. Don't get any dirty ideas. Shove that part down in first. And then what we're going to do is just kind of push. And you'll hear snaps. Push down where the clips were. Snap in. Make sure it's in all the way. And now it's installed. So now we get to the part where we take it and turn the computer back on and see two things. One, does the keyboard work? Which I bought this second hand, so hopefully it does. And second of all, do we have illumination? All right, moment of truth. Let's, uh, dear, would you hit the light switch if you wouldn't mind? So it's easier to see. Let's see if it works. Pushing the power button. Houston, we have liftoff. Okay, turn the light back on. Now, the next part, as you can see, it's all backlit from every angle. Uh, the next part I'm going to show you is on the computer itself. So, um, see you in a minute. Okay, now that we've figured out that the uh, illumination works, this is one thing that you really should do before you leave any feedback or get too cocky and excited that you have a backlit keyboard. I would right-click on the desktop and click New Rich Text File or Text File, it doesn't really matter. And you can name it whatever you want because it's getting deleted in like a minute anyway. Open it up and start by going through the alphabet. EFG. <laughs> you know, I really should have my daughter out here doing this because then she would be singing and this would be a little more entertaining. All right, so we've gone lowercase through all of them. That works. Now hold the shift key. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. I sound like an idiot. <laughs> okay, so we know shift works. Um, you know, check caps lock, num lock, all the fun keys. Check backspace, check enter. Especially backspace because backspace is for some reason, I'll never understand, backspace is one of the keys that breaks all the time. I don't know if people get mad about something and then they start slamming it or something, but that seems to be one of the most common keys that breaks. And, uh, you know, try all the number keys. Try all, shift in all the number keys. And honestly, try bringing up the task manager. I'm not going to do it here, but control A, L, T, delete. Hold down the Windows key and R for run. You know, just test everything, make sure it works. Uh, the one thing you're definitely going to want to check is there should be a key on a backlit keyboard that looks like a keyboard with lights coming off of it. That, depending on the laptop, um, you'll either have just that or you'll have that and something next to it, meaning that this one in particular just has an on and off function for the lights. Some higher-end laptops have on-off and then you can also adjust the brightness of the backlight. So we're going to try this. Hold down function and the key. And there we go. It's off. And now it's back on again. So everything works. Alright, cool. So that works. Everything's fine. Um, I'm sure you're wondering why I didn't tell you to put the keyboard screw back on. The reason for that is if you install this and there's a problem, you're going to obviously have to take it apart again. Um, if you are hitting the keyboard and only some of the keys are working and some of them aren't, there is a chance, even though you think you put it perfectly, that the ribbon cable may need to be reseated. If that's the case, just rewind the video, do it all over again. Take out the ribbon cable, look closely and make sure the pins are in contact with the, you know, contacts on the ribbon cable perfectly because these things are very finicky. I've had it before where I've tried to type in my password to get into Windows and it only picked up half of it. 
and then I shut it down. I moved the ribbon cable like a thousandth of a millimeter, and then it worked perfectly fine. Um, it's also important because if you're like me and you buy these parts off of eBay, because I'm sorry I'm not giving Dell $250 for a keyboard, um, this one was 15 Before you contact the seller and start any kind of claim or anything, you want to make sure that it's not just a reseated ribbon cable. You want to make sure that you know the keyboard's actually broken before you start a fight about it. Um, if it types and has no backlight, that actually can be a couple of different things. Um, first thing would be, like I said again, the very first thing I would try is turning the backlight on and off with the key. It could just be that it's not on. Um, the second thing that I would try before you take it back apart, some manufacturers, specifically Dell, I know for a fact, in the BIOS before you boot, you actually, I know that my uh, Latitude E6510 has this in it. When you turn it on, you actually have to enable the backlight on the keyboard in the BIOS. For some reason, that is one of the dumbest things I've ever seen in my life. It doesn't automatically, there shouldn't even be an option for it. Uh, that's what the button's for. So if that's the case, depending on your manufacturer, the way that you would get into a BIOS is shut down the computer and when you turn it on, hit the power button and immediately start tapping either F2, um, F10, or F11. I've also seen F12, but that's rare. Most of uh, the laptops or any computers, almost all of them are F2. Um, it will be in there somewhere. I think it's call just keyboard illumination on mine. Um, but that that could be a possibility that it's just not enabled and the keyboard's fine. Um, if you do that, well, actually, first of all, if you restart the computer and you can't get into the BIOS because the F2 key's not working, um, there's your answer. If you get into the BIOS and enable it and it's still not backlit, then I would shut down the computer again. Then I would start, you know, screwing around with the ribbon cable and see what happens. Uh, another thing that you could try, <laughs> I won't get into a whole story about this, but let me just tell you from first-hand experience that cleaning a keyboard with rubbing alcohol is a very bad idea, Madison. So what you're going to do, um, the best way to clean contacts on a ribbon cable, take a run-of-the-mill pencil eraser. I know it sounds ridiculous, but those little pink ones that you had when you were in school, are the best thing you can use to clean contacts on a uh, ribbon cable. Do not use the black erasers. They leave a residue on there that can actually make things worse. White erasers, I couldn't tell you because I never used them. But if you just have a standard number two pencil sitting around, use the end of that very carefully. Swipe in the direction of the contacts. Don't swipe across them because then you can cause a bigger problem and rip a contact off the ribbon cable and those are basically impossible to fix. Um, do that, plug in the ribbon cable, turn it back on, see if you still have a problem. If you still have a problem at that point, I'm going to guess that there's something either wrong with the keyboard connector on the motherboard, which as long as you've been gentle with it is highly unlikely, or you did get a broken keyboard. Another thing that could possibly be wrong is um, a driver problem. Now this is really stupid. If you want to know how to do that, um, how to fix that problem rather, I'm going to stop this part right here and I'll show you in uh, my computer really quick if you had that problem, how you would force it to re, you know, fix itself. Okay, so if you tried everything else, the pencil eraser, the ribbon cables, the you know, BIOS and everything, and it's still not working or it's working kind of screwy, um, come in here hit start, window system, bet you already know what I'm going to say, control panel, go into hardware and sound and go to device manager. Scroll down to keyboards and what you're going to want is the standard PS2 keyboard. Um, I'm not going to do this because I'm not having an issue with mine, but if you are, right click and click ins uninstall device and when it says warning, yes, hit uninstall. After that, hit action and scan for hardware changes and it'll force it to reinstall the driver for the, uh, the keyboard. If that still doesn't work then do this again 
uninstall device, yes, uninstall, and then immediately restart the computer and it'll force install the driver during boot. If that still doesn't work, then you're more than likely have a bad keyboard. Um, the chances, like I said before, the chances of the connector on the motherboard being the problem are very slim, assuming that you haven't played Ultimate Frisbee with it lately. All right, I think that's pretty much covered everything. Um, if you have done all that and you verify that it works and everything's fine, go ahead and put the keyboard screw back in if you have one and off to the races. Um, if you have a problem, then obviously get in contact with the seller or whatever it is that you have to do. Um, if you're in Windows and, you know, if you, for instance, if this is your only computer and you have to file a claim with eBay, there is one thing that you can do if you don't have a working keyboard to still have a working keyboard. And I'll show you that really quickly because this is going to take a minute. Okay, so last part of this video. If you only have one computer and you absolutely have to use this computer like you, I don't know, for whatever reason your phone isn't working or whatever, this is your only way to file a claim with eBay or anything like that, there are two ways to actually be able to type even though you don't have a working keyboard. It's a pain in the ass, but, you know, desperate times. If you are already in Windows and you find out that it doesn't work, uh, what you're going to do is go into File Explorer. Or actually, you know what? Easier way to do this. Hold down the Windows key, press R, and we're going to type in C colon backslash Windows backslash System32 backslash OSK.exe and hit enter. And what that brings up is the on-screen keyboard. This is built into every version of Windows since, I don't know, Windows XP, probably. Um, I think what it's built in here for is for people that have, I don't know, motor skill problems or whatever it is. And you can, you know, type whatever it is you gotta type. Okay, there you have it. Um, I think I pretty much covered everything that can possibly go wrong with the keyboard. Um, if you snap it in half when you're installing it, I got nothing for you. Uh, glue's not going to fix it, and hopes and dreams only go so far. Um, so hopefully it worked out for you. It usually is one of the easiest things to fix possible. And um, I guess if there's nothing else to cover, thanks for watching.